Okay, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a brief review of array lists because I know it's been a long summer and you don't remember. So let's, uh, I'm going to do it in BlueJ. I would like you to do it in IntelliJ. And we're going to do this, we're just going to call this uh, array list review. So I'll call this uh, uh, project uh, list review, list review project like that. All right, and I'll create a dummy class called demo here. And we're going to, now I'm going to delete all these comments. You should put your name and today's date in here so that you'll know when you did this. And we're going to delete all this boilerplate and put in a, a little static. All right, we're ready to go. So first thing is, and you won't have to do this on IntelliJ, but I will have to import uh, ArrayList. Uh, import Java util array list. Yours will probably import automatically. And now we want to write some array lists. And I want to just go over some of the basics that you probably don't remember from CSA. So let's say I want to create an array list of integers. Can I do this? Array list. Can I do that? What do you think? Mr. Joji, why can't I do that, sir? Okay, I need the wrapper class. So I need to do this. Now, next item up is that we don't usually write it like this. We usually write it with, instead of array list here, what do we have usually on the left-hand side of the declaration? Okay, Mr. Franovic, this appears to be your day, sir. Just list. So as a reminder, what is the difference between array list and list? What is the difference? Whoever's hand is up there, who is that? This is an interface. Yeah, ArrayList is a concrete class that implements it. What is the advantage? Does anybody remember what is the advantage of putting the interface here and the list here? What does that let me do later? Mr. Moises, what does it let me do, sir? Later on, I can go and replace this with another kind of list. Now, right now, this is the only kind of list you know, but soon we're going to learn another kind of list called linked list. And by putting it like this, we guarantee that this data variable going forward can only call list methods. We're purposely restricting it to only call list methods. It turns out, by the way, I don't think ArrayList has any methods that are outside the list class. I looked the other day, couldn't find any. But in any case, the general case is that we want to restrict this variable to only call list methods so that later on, if we choose to swap it out with a different kind of list, the code will still compile and, at least in theory, run. So this is the way we're going to define it for our use for the remainder of this year. Now, what I want to do is I want to put some numbers in the list. And can someone tell me, how would I put the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 into the into this array list? What would be a good way to do that? Data.add. And then I would go like this. 1, 2, 3, and 4. I would go like this. And I'm pretty sure that this is the way that we did it in CSA. Yes? I'm going to show you a shortcut now that we're going to use for the rest of this year where it's too painful to write all four lines of code. So I'm going to, and let's print the list. Remember that unlike arrays, array lists have a two string built in. So you don't have to provide one and it knows how to print it. So let's run this. And you can see here, I've created my array list all on one line. Let's look briefly at what's happening here. I'm calling a static method called as list on the arrays class. And what it does is it takes this and converts it into a list. And then that list serves as the starter list for this list. So that is typically how we're going to initialize array lists in this class. Now, I'm going to modify this slightly by putting some sevens in here. And just to see if you remember, I would like you to write a little loop for me right here, which removes all the sevens. So let's, let's do this. Let's print the list. Let's remove the sevens, and then let's print the list again. Just a quick little review for you so that we can get sort of recalibrated to where we were last year before we get started on the new stuff. Mr. Basu, sir, can you look at the code that I've written up here? How do you feel about it? OK. So there's a classic bug in here where if I run this, it'll appear to work. But look what happens now. You can see that it skips over some of the sevens. 
And so we have to either add an I minus minus here or we have to parse the list backwards. That's just a little reminder. And I want to go over some other items here also. When I say remove I here, how does it know whether to remove the index or the item itself? Like, how does it know I'm not trying to remove a zero and then a one and then a two? Yes, sir. Okay, so if I wanted to remove I as an object, what would I need to do here, Ben? Okay, I would have to do this if I wanted to remove the item. But if I don't put that there, then it assumes that it's just the index that's being removed. Okay, so the, the item at that location. Over here, I'm using a double equals, even though this technically is an object because it's got capital integer in it. How come I'm allowed to do that with a double equals here if this is an object? It's because the compiler automatically unboxes the integer to a little int for me. And auto boxing and unboxing is a feature that we discussed last year. I'm sure you don't remember it. That's why I'm bringing it up now. Yes, sir. OK, so you can see we have this. Now, what I would like to do is uh, for our next exercise, I would like you to print the items in this list using a for each loop. Print one per line, one item per line using a for each loop. Mr. Alejandro, sir, can you help me write a for each loop to print the items? Okay. So you notice to use little int. Would it also have worked if I had done? Yes. Uh, this is actually preferred, but because of, once again of the auto boxing, using little int here is okay. Uh, I'm going to have a slight objection here to the variable naming. We just agreed as members of a coding community that i, j, and k are really reserved variables for what purpose? Indexes of loops. So here, we're going to confuse the reader. So I think that a better uh, variable name would be something like this. And that would be uh, a better way to go. Let's try it. Uh, and I, I actually think this is probably, and you can see that I've got all my items from my list printing one at a time now. So when we have an array, let's look at an array comparison here. When we access this array, the compiler knows how to access it from the beginning element. So it knows that this string of numbers is sitting at this location in memory, and it knows how big each integer is, 32 bits. So if I say, OK, I want the item at location 0 or the item at location 1, it multiplies 32 bits by whatever index I need to move over, and it can access the item really, really fast. And we call that random access. And random access means that it takes the exact same amount of time for me to retrieve the last item or the middle item or the first item. I don't really care. Question, is the array list also random access? Discuss with your partner. Mr. Mariak, sir, what is your opinion of the array list? Do you think it's random access? It is. Why is it random access? Sir, if I looked inside an array list, what would I find hiding inside? Uh, an array. Try to understand that this is just an array with some fancy stuff around it that you can't see that's making it look like it's some really fancy class, but inside it's just an array. What happens if I try to insert stuff into the array and I run out of space? I can't do it. How does it work for an array list then? Ben? It's an array twice the size. Yeah, it makes a bigger array and copies everything over. You don't see that. All that ugliness is hidden from you, but it's just an array. So therefore, if this is random access, the array list is also random access. That means that retrieving information, if you know the index, is really, really fast. 